healthcare workload, segmentation, zero trust. We're gonna get a little bit deeper here. So we're in our workspace within segmentation. We can see that the application dependency mapping has done its magic. It's created all of these policies. And what we're gonna do is have a quick look at the integration with ICE. We can see engineering SGT of 123. We're gonna go ahead and do a search. So the little asterisk uh, that's uh, in the front of the tag that we're looking for means that it was created through some type of integration or manual upload, um, but it's tags that we've introduced to the system. This is through the integration with Identity Services Engine. And we can see this asset here from interns, um, the IP address, but it's assigned that tag from Identity Services Engine. That's really cool because what that allows us to do now is extend policy to include the clients coming in from the campus. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the a different uh, view. This is the list view of policy. This shows us the communications between consumer, which is your client, to a, the service itself or provider. Um, and so you could you know, click in that a little bit and look around. This is the new view in um, 3.5 and you can really look at the communication patterns between what ports are talking to what and it's a little bit more visual. Um, uh, pretty excited about this new capability at least from a visual perspective. At the same time, let's go back over to um, the list. We'll go to policy analysis and um, maybe what we'll do here is um, capture a timeline and go ahead and run our policy analysis to determine um, you know what traffic is actually being permitted or allowed, what traffic might be um, rejected based on policy, and then what traffic might escape, meaning that there is um, a policy um, that is not being met, right? Our segmentation is uh, failing. Uh, so when you when you go ahead and, and deploy an enforcement policy, we, we should see very little, if if not enough, no uh, escaped flows. So here's the permitted flows here. And, and when we click on permitted, and now it's only showing rejected and escaped, and we can see that there's some escaped flows. And so what this is showing us is that there's some communication from the interns to the web um, service itself. And that in our case is a breach of the segmentation policy. So there's a compromise uh, or access uh, control that's not enforced here that's allowing the interns to access this web service and only engineering should allow or be allowed to have access to this particular um, asset. So one of the things we can do is we can set up an alert here that um, allows us to identify um, a flow as an example that has uh, escaped. So live analysis annotated flows contains escaped. And we can go ahead and check the advanced settings. This is gonna allow us to enable the individual uh, uh, alerts. Also, we can include the flow data or details and we go ahead and enable that. Okay, so we're moving along, but we do have a concern here with the interns communicating with this web server. We can pivot in and we can see a little bit more uh, details around the flow itself. This is gonna allow us to make decisions. So in this case, we are going to ensure that we're gonna uh, push the latest policy to mitigate this risk. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's jump back uh, into this application here. This shows us the communications between each of the nodes or workloads. Um, and uh, uh, currently the flow is, is allowed. You can see that there's no red here. And, um, and so this is the way it's operating before we have pushed our segmentation policy out. So let's go ahead and jump back into Tetration or Cisco Secure Workload. Go back to Policies. We can see our policies are in place here. 
and let's hit enforcement go ahead and enforce policy and if everything is right we should see that the um, at least we should see some blocking from the interns to that web server all right so now we pushed it out roughly 30 uh, seconds that policy is going to be deployed uh, it could take up to 90 seconds in some uh, circumstances um, but typically you know it's less than that so let's go ahead and have a peek at the uh, application that we were looking at around flow and let's see if anything changes here and we do we see two things happening here the first thing is is the the interns pod 02 can no longer communicate to web pod 02 and you see uh, dub, 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 pod 02 can't communicate. I believe it was app 02, and that was part of a policy that was already in, in, in play. We're also now starting to see an increase in rejects and a decrease in escaped flows. So this is a good sign that our policy is now starting to take effect. Now, if we go back into our scope um, and have a look here, we can search for the pod. You can see here there's some other um, elements here. So pod equals pod 02, location equals data center. So these are all tags that, uh, that we have introduced into the system because of the asterisks. That's how we know that that's um, something that we've introduced. And so you create your own tags. You can import them with CSVs. You can use you know, an IPAM to integrate uh, identity services, as I mentioned. When we go over to policy within that specific workload itself, we can see the actual access policy on that node. So you can see ingress and egress and the ports that are allowed. Um, and so you can do a little bit of troubleshooting here. There's also an element called quick analysis that you can leverage, but really, really cool stuff.